Well, uh, you know, the rules, uh, golf has very precise rules. Uh, investing has rules also, uh, rules of engagement. Tell about your grandpa and the Golden Gate Fields racetrack. Oh my goodness, well that was simply, his joy in life was to drive Sacramento where we lived down to, uh, to, to San Francisco. But on the way he always wanted to stop at the Golden Gate Fields and uh, he loved to gamble. He was a lawyer and uh, part of his, I don't know, thoughts were I could make a fortune with these horses. So I learned through him how to make a $2 bet. And I learned also that it's impossible to make a lot of money on a $2 bet, even if you win, which is very seldom. The odds are always 10 or 12 times against you because there's 11 or 12 other horses running against your bet. So I learned a lot, though, as a kid uh, about the odds. How passionate were you about basketball growing up? Basketball, I love basketball, and, and I played all the way through it. I, in fact, I loved all sports, frankly, but basketball was one of my more favorite ones. The unfortunate thing, I didn't grow tall enough. You know, I got to 5'9", and I stopped out there, and the other guys went on to 6'6", six, 6'4", six, whatever. And so I played B basketball, and that was a lot of fun, but then I finally said, if I can't play varsity, the heck with it. I'm going to go into golf and tennis and some other things that I can be good at and get on the golf team, get on the tennis team. What are some of your earliest caddying memories? Oh, those were great experiences. Not only did I make money, which money was quite important to me as a kid because I didn't have much, uh, but I also hung around, usually it was always men, on a Saturday morning. Uh, I could learn about their conversations, what they were thinking about, what they were talking about, usually funny jokes. But I learned a little bit about golf and golf etiquette, and so that really gave me a lot of stimulus to really work on my golf game You know, when I was 15 years of age. Why was tennis and golf, or why were they confidence boosters for you early on? Well, I think all sports. When I got into sports, I was you know, played you know, grammar school, whatever, any sport that was available. And that really helped my confidence um, because I was pretty good at it where in schooling I wasn't particularly great at it. And uh, I was on the golf teams and I was on the tennis teams and, and I won a lot of matches and, and sort of gave me self-confidence that I was pretty good at something. You mentioned kind of what you learned from caddying. Uh, what do you think over the years the sport of golf has taught you? Oh, there's so many uh, comparisons with life uh, that go on in golf, It's whether it's Practice makes perfect. Uh, whether you make a, a shot into the out of bounds, uh, you get a, a shot over again, you get a reprieve, uh, start over and work hard on it. Uh, working with friends, the competitions, the handling of uh, pressure, uh, the competition among teams, and, and I was somewhat of a leader of the, the golf team at the time, and... Uh, you were the captain in uh, high school, I was right? for, for one year, I was a captain, and that was keep the enthusiasm up and keep the other guys in the team highly jacked up, and we won, we won a number of events. And uh, one in particular was the year I was, I think I was a junior, where I shot the lowest score, and we won the CIF championship in Southern California, and my friend Alan Geiberg was already state junior champion. He was clearly number one in our golf team, and I was probably number three at the time. But I shot the lowest score that particular day. And our team won, not only I won the individual, but the team won the, the whole team award. And that was really, uh, for me, was uh, pretty important because I think it's how I eventually got into college. How responsible do you think? I think uh, it was invaluable is? that I was a pretty good golfer. That uh, for I getting had, you into Stanford. Yeah, for getting to Stanford, I applied to two colleges, Stanford and University of California. Fortunately, I got into both. One was a state school, and uh, my grades were okay. My SATs were horrible, and uh, but I think but golf. What's horrible? Well, I don't know what the scores are now, but I, I, I don't think I was. I think it was probably. I don't even can't remember. It was, I don't think it was 600. I was, I, 
when you're dyslexic, and I didn't know that at the time, I have even difficulties reading the instructions on a test. Is it a double negative? Negative, I spend more time worried about what are they really asking me than I did on the actual answers to the questions. So anyway, it's, that's a long story. We don't need to get into that one. The connections be between golf and investing, in your opinion, are what? Well, uh, you know, it's, it's the rules. Uh, golf has very precise rules. Uh, investing has rules also, uh, rules of engagement. It's all about investing. It's all about what happens in the world of capitalism and so forth, and, and innovation and uh, creativity and those kinds of things. Certainly in golf, there's those components too. You see some of the greatest golfers today, whether it's Tiger Woods or Phil Mickelson, uh, creating shots that you never would have seen before. They did it, but they had the skill to do it. But it came from practice. And so you were saying you applied to schools, two schools, University of California. Yeah. And uh, uh, Stanford, and you thought. Well, golf. Uh, the story was, uh, my freshman, uh, the freshman team at Stanford, played the high school golf team. I went to Santa Barbara High School, and we played them when uh, in that spring. And the golf coach from Stanford obviously watched the the match going on. I played extremely well that day, and I am sure I don't have proof of it that he must have said. I think I'd like to have this kid on the golf team. They didn't have scholarships back then because the tuitions then were only $250 a quarter. They were pretty, pretty low, to say the least. But I think the reason why I got into the school wasn't because of my SATs, because of my incredible capability of golf. Uh, I've seen you many years <laughs> yeah, playing right. in the uh, AT&T oh, yeah. Pebble Beach program. How about your fondest memory from there? Making the cut, that's what we all try to achieve is make the cut. And I've made it uh, three times now. And the reward is you get an umbrella that says, when you open it up, it says, I made the cut. <laughs> so that's what you really work hard for. Uh, it's all about pride. Anybody noteworthy you've played with there that uh, oh, I particularly played with, stick I played out? with Mickelson quite a few times. Uh, you guys are close. Close friends, and he always comes over to the house for dinner nowadays. I don't play with him that much in the at t because he's playing with all the people that have the big signs up there. It's uh, the different commercial company. They pay him a lot of money for that hat. What's the typical dinner conversation when he's oh, over? Oh, we're talking generally about things in life, his kids. Uh, we try to keep up to date with he and uh, Amy's kids, and they're going off to college and so forth, and you know, just what, what has, what's inspired, what's uh, what's happened the last year, kind of thing.